Fishing for Fugitives, another idea that we have here at the agency. Um, the Chamber of Commerce loves it because I show everybody how beautiful Brevard County is. Um, and uh, so, Jay, if you'll hit that one. Hello, everybody. I'm Sheriff Wayne Ivory of the Brevard County Sheriff's Office. And this is our new innovative program, Fishing for Fugitives. We ask our citizens to get behind us, help us get fugitives off our street and behind bars at the Brevard County Jail. <laughs> so today I'm at the beautiful Cocoa Beach Pier, and I gotta tell you, it is beautiful out here. Great historic part of Brevard County. If you haven't been out here, come on out. Great time, but it's also great fishing. And today we're fishing for fugitives, if you know. And I think, I'll be honest with you, I think I've already got one on the line. We want to get every one of our fugitives off the street, get them behind bars, and where they can't hurt anybody else or victimize anybody else. Let's see who our catch of the day is today. Audie Ray Perkins Jr. is a white male date of birth June 12, 1978, and is wanted for violation of probation reference fraudulent use of a credit card with a no bond status. He is commonly known to frequent the waters of Cocoa Beach and was last hooked on June 8, 2018. All right, folks, it's time to hook them and book them. So if you know where we can find our catch of the day, call us by going to Crime Line at 1-800-423-TIPS. You can send us an email at fishingforfugitives at pcso.us, or you can send us a personal message on our Facebook page. Either way, if you know where we can get our catch of the day, let our fugitive team know so they can go get them and get them into custody and out to the Brevard County Jail. If you're the catch of the day, you know what to do. Go turn yourself in. Do the right thing. Don't make our fugitive unit come get you. Because if you don't, I promise you, they're just a little bit away from your house. <laughs> So, um, what do you think the first question we got asked when uh, we rolled this out what on Facebook? Fishing line? What was it? What was on the fishing line? No, does Sheriff Ivy have a fishing license? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was the very first question anybody asked. So. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I don't have a fishing license. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, uh, people always uh, they, they love it. Um, we, we got critiqued a little bit because the fish was upside down. Um, uh, when you're when you're uh, taking photos with fishes, you hang them by the tail, and so uh, we've turned them over now. Uh, people love it. The Chamber of Commerce loves it because we're showing. I go to all the different fishing areas and I talk about what's there and everything, so uh, it works pretty well uh, from it. So next one, Jeff. All right. So this one I'll set the stage with. My wife come up with this idea, um, and if you don't know it, I'm married to an Italian Irish redhead. I live um, every day of my life in fear, so if, uh, if my wife tells me to do something, I'm going to do it. So uh, um, We're watching TV one day, I, all right, I'm just going to ask this question, uh, and you better raise your hand whether that's true or not. How many of you watch the Holiday Baking Championship? How many of you in here? <laughs> okay, that doesn't make me feel any better. <laughs> my wife and I watched the Holiday Bacon Championship, the Spring Bacon Championship, the October Bacon Championship. I mean, it's, it's, I, I knew my life had come to a crashing halt when I'm in Tallahassee one day for a conference, and she's at home. We're both watching it, and we're texting back and forth who we think is going to get kicked off the show. I thought, if any of my friends knew this, if one knew this, I'd be in deep trouble. But we're watching it one day on a commercial break. My wife says, you know, you don't have a cooking show on your Facebook page. And uh, I said, that's pretty funny. She goes, no, I'm serious. She goes, a lot of people like cooking. She goes, you draw a whole new audience to your Facebook page. So I got to thinking, what are the two things people look up the most on the internet? Food and crime. That's the two most populous things on the internet. Other than um, who played in a movie or something like that. But when they're looking for depth and detail stuff, that's what they're looking for. So I married the two together and we came up with the idea of cooking up justice. Again, we go back to that partnership. We go to our local restaurants, our mom and pop places. I go into their kitchen. They show me how to make their signature meal. Um, when, it, when it's put on the stove or in the oven, I say, while that's cooking up, let's cook up a little bit of Bavard County justice. And we show a fugitive or we show a case we're trying to solve. Um, I told my wife I was going to do it. She goes, I was just kidding. I'm like, I like the idea. It gets the, the other thing, the local restaurants like it. It gives them some notoriety, lets people know they're partners with us. I have the restaurant owners tell me all the time, hey, I had people come in and say they saw it on Cooking Up Justice. They want that meal, da da da. So we're giving back to our community. We're working, we're partnering. So give you a little brief. So today I'm going to meet you at Italian Bakery at 7720 North Wickham Road, Suite 114. I got to tell you, if you've never visited this place, they have some amazing treats inside. This Italian bakery has got it going on. I know Marie's inside waiting on me. She's going to show me how to make wedding cookies today, and I'm excited. This is going to be one of our best episodes ever. So we're in the kitchen.
kitchen at Amici's Bakery, and I've got Marie with me. She's been in here. So, um, Marie worked me harder than I've ever been worked in my life. Um, I'm never going back there. Um, I, I order and run in and get it now because I'm scared she'll put me back in the, in the, the kitchen there. But um, uh, that's the that's kind of thing we do. We go to, like I said, we only go to our mom and pop places um, and try and highlight them, but we're also getting people engaged in watching what we're doing. Uh, ability to honor our employees is uh, one, of our, one of our employees that delivered a baby, um, got called to a, a store. Um, he delivered the baby, so we had a chance to reunite um, him with the, the couple, the, the um, proud parents and the baby. And uh, you can see, I'm um, at the bottom of it, um, you can see 256 comment, 3,000 emojis, and it was shared 285 times. So people are seeing this, they're, they're putting it out there. It's touching people's lives and touching people's hearts. Um, and everybody now has been personalized with our deputy. Everybody now is going, oh, I saw that person, and they, they become people instead of those in uniform. Next one, Jim. Speaking engagements, we talked about um, uh, just real briefly. Um, whether it's me or one of our team that's out presenting, we try and promote what we're doing. It also sets the stage for other organizations that may want us to come talk to them. For example, we have, and I think I have it in here, we have um, some things we call, um, what are they, lunch and learns, power lunches, where our team goes out at lunchtime, you bring in um, food for your employees and they teach, um, you know, maybe it's identity theft, maybe it's on active shooter, something like that. Next one, brother. Uh, use animals when possible. All right, here's the story on that. I can put up a post that says today, Jay crawled into a burning car and saved a 75-year-old man from burning to death. It'll get 100 likes, 16 comments, and it'll be shared about 22 times. I can put up that today, Jay crawled into a burning car and saved a puppy, and it'll reach 5 million people. <laughs> That's the reality of the world we live in. All right, so... Um, we, we have all sorts of sex, uh, success stories now that we have um, um, animal services under our, our guard. Um, you can see um, uh, the one on the left is one of our deputies that got a raccoon. Um, she found two little baby raccoons. Now here's the backside to it. When people see stuff like this where here we are with two baby raccoons, some people will say, you shouldn't take them from the area. Mama's probably looking for them and everything else. They, they don't see everything that we're trying to do and what we, we also don't put up in a lot of our posts is that mom had been hit by a car. Um, and so we were, we were trying to, to get the answer. We partnered again with our partners. We put them up in the post. Florida Wildlife Hospital, who is such a great organization here in Brevard County. So we're putting the stuff up. We, um, you know, uh, back to school study buddy. We were advertising for our animal shelter, trying to make sure that we're getting every animal out there adopted out. Um, so we, we put that up. Now, word of caution. Be careful what you say about animals on social media. We had a program called Save Me Saturday where we were putting up a dog or a cat from our animal shelter every Saturday trying to get people to come adopt them. We were taking the animals that had been there a little bit longer, trying to get people motivated to come get them. On one particular Saturday, we had a dog. It actually looks a little bit like that dog that's in the photo. Um, and we put up, um, uh, I'm, this is Beauty. Um, she's ready to be adopted. Uh, her name was Beauty. So, boom, got adopted. The following week, they sent me a picture of a cat because we try to alternate between dogs and cats. So they sent me a picture of a cat. This was the ugliest cat I'd ever seen in my life. It looked like it just come out of a dryer. Right? Big, big face. It looked mad. It looked mean. You remember that, Michelle? You remember the picture of that? It was, it was, I'm like, nobody's going to adopt this cat. Why would you send me this picture? So in my marketing mind, which everybody in this room will understand, in my marketing mind, I thought, I know how I'll get this cat adopted. So I put up there on the caption, I may not be beautiful, but I am adoptable. Come, come adopt me. You would have thought I killed people. <laughs> I got hate email. I got people saying that I should resign as being sheriff, that I have no more compassion than that. I went on there and tried to explain what my, my thought was of, you know, hey, it'll motivate people. The dog before was beauty, beautiful. No, nobody was listening to that. So I do not talk bad about animals anymore. I don't say anything about how they feel. That'll get you in trouble. Next slide, please, Jeff. Yeah. All right, just a continuation of that. Thank you. Uh, no, thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Sheriff Wayne Ivory of the Brevard County Sheriff's Office. And this is my best friend, Judy. He and I are partners. And we love the guy in trouble. My wife told me she likes to listen to the music. And we enjoy riding through the streets of Brevard County. So, Judy and I love to uh, stop by our favorite drive thrus and actually even come see our friends at the credit union because they love Judy and love to give them snacks. Hey, Judy. Look what we got in the morning. 
Hey, Jimmy. Thanks, guys. See you next time. While taking the dog out for car rides seems cool, it's important to remember that we live in Florida, and our best friend may actually be cool, safer, and happier when left comfortably at home. One of the biggest problems happens when you and your pet are out running errands, and you need to go inside a store or a business. The easy solution for some is to leave the dog in the car. I mean, after all, what can go wrong? You can leave the windows cracked, and you're only going to be gone for just a couple of minutes, right? Actually, a lot can go wrong, as just one minute too long inside a hot car can be a death sentence for our pets. So the next time you think about taking your dog with you to run errands in this hot Florida weather, think about how you would feel if your pet left you in the car while they went inside the shop, you know, the business house, grab lunch, or even get a pedicure. The temperature inside a vehicle in hot climates can rise quickly, sometimes jumping up as much as 40 degrees in just 20 to 30 minutes. Dogs have a normal body temperature from 105 to 102.5 degrees. When the body temperature of the dog reaches 106 to 109 degrees, heat stroke and the death of your pet is imminent. At 104 degrees, your dog will start to feel some symptoms of heat stroke, such as extremely rapid pulse and diminished coordination. At 109 degrees, your dog will start to experience organ failure, with only 50% of dogs surviving at this point. And if that's not bad enough, the statistics get worse with the passing of every second. While Judy knew I wanted to make a point, all right, so um, when the team told me we were going to film this, um, I thought they were joking. I thought we were just going to show me in the car, you know, and stuff. And they're like, oh, no, we need you to sweat. We need you to. Uh, so, so they literally left me in the car for a while. And uh, so we're going to do a video now about don't leave your sheriff in the car. Uh, that, that did not go well for us. But um, that video was a little bit longer. Um, we talked earlier about trying to keep them short. That was a little bit longer, but we knew it wouldn't matter because the messaging of it, especially with the animals and everything in it, would capture the audience. And, and it did. That, that reached tons of people through our messaging. So, crime prevention messages. I don't even know what's next, Jay. Oh, this is um, another one of our um, uh, uh, parodies that we uh, we took from the, the uh, characters off the Spectrum and Dish commercials. Again, we try and mix a little bit of humor in with everything we're doing. When it's time to be serious, we're ultra serious, but if we can mix a little humor in and get people to pay attention to the message, Not ready. <laughs> it's not my time yet. Don't worry, don't worry. I just came to tell you you left your garage door open. What? You left your garage door open. You don't know what kind of monsters could be lurking around in the neighborhood looking for an easy target. Hello, everybody. I'm Sheriff Wayne Ivey with the Mark County Sheriff's Office. The majority of burglars continue to occur to easy targets, open garages, unlocked doors, and property left out in the open. You have the power to stop these crimes from occurring and protect your family and your property. Close your garage door and lock your doors. Don't think of your neighbor's open garage door as not your problem. Instead, think of it as attracting potential crime to your neighborhood. Get to know your neighbors and inform them if you see something like an open garage or an unsecured gate. I didn't realize. Thank you so much for telling me. So you just happened to be in the neighborhood? Oh, oh, she lives right over there. <laughs> the, the lady, the guy playing um, the uh, Grim Reaper is Mike Green. He's one of our lieutenants, um, and he is actually that tall. And then Brenda Krieger works at our East Precinct. She's an executive assistant there. And uh, Brenda's actually been in a few of the plays at the uh, Coco Playhouse. Uh, where she's uh, an actress there. Uh, this is a new program we came up with not too long ago. Um, it's again designed to uh, introduce our team to everybody and uh, uh, also to show all the different components of our agency because most people just think that the only part of our agency we have is a star car out there. They don't they don't get to meet the aviation unit. They don't get to meet the the uh, corrections deputies, the communications officers, the IT people, all of it. So. This is um, we are BCSO. I'll just show Hello, you everyone. I'm Sheriff Wayne Ivey of the Brevard County Sheriff's Office, and welcome to We Are BCSO. As everyone knows, the Brevard County Sheriff's Office is comprised of hundreds of men and women who bring many different talents to our team. We come from every walk of life, and we are united by our commitment to keep Brevard County safe. The ultimate key to our success 
is how every member in every unit in our agency works together to reduce crime, enforce the law, and save taxpayers thousands of dollars, all while creating a better quality of life for our citizens and visitors. Welcome to We Are BCSO. So I think this one's with our aviation So today we're taking a behind the scenes look at the Brevard County Sheriff's Office Aviation Unit that works 365 days a year. So we try and not date stamp our stuff and we, we messed up in that one. Anybody catch it, what it is? That tells you when we did that? I was wearing a pink badge. If you go, if you go back and look at it, I'm wearing a pink badge, so it was October. And so we try and not date stamp our stuff because then we can't reuse it or we don't feel as comfortable with reusing it. Um, we, we messed up in that one. It was okay though because we still um, promoted breast cancer awareness and, and uh, that, was, that was a great part of it. Um, involvement in our community, just showing the different things that we're out doing um, from being at schools to uh, people bringing us in cookies and cupcakes and speaking at different events every day. Um, uh, on the left is um, some outreach we did. Every year we go to um, uh, celebrate the birthdays of three ladies who um, are each over 100 years old. It's at one of our um, senior centers. Uh, myself and two of our chiefs go, and we just go and, and uh, have, have um, lunch with them and celebrate. Um, one of them, I think, is 104. Um, and uh, so we always enjoy doing it and having a great time with them. The thing on the right was something our crime prevention, our community relations team came up with, and it was a um, uh, Easter egg hunt for the visually impaired. And uh, we put it up, again, we're showing how much we engage and be involved in our community. We put it up, um, if you've never been to watch one of these, it was probably the most heartfelt thing I've ever seen in my life. The Easter eggs have audible um, uh, noises in them. And so you hide them, and then those that are visually impaired um, go to where the sound is, and they, they pick up the Easter eggs and stuff. So we had deputies that were walking through the fields with them, um, arm in arm, helping them find the eggs and stuff. And then, there, there wasn't a dry eye in the place um, as we did. There was a lady there. Um, she was, I believe, Michelle, do you remember? She was 47. Um, and her entire life she had wanted to do an Easter egg hunt and had never done it. She got, her husband said, we know this is for kids. I said, no, nah, it's not for kids. It's for anybody. And um, she went out and, again, there wasn't a dry eye in the audience. Um, that's the kind of stuff that our community relations team is engaged in trying to do with our community. It's not just about preventing crimes. It's about being a partner in our community. Um, sharing stories. Um, the young man that you see in the dual pictures on the left, um, that's Sergeant Rosenfeld out of our North Precinct. And uh, you notice he looks a lot younger um, in the picture on the far left where he's having his arm raised as a wrestler. Um, he's been with our agency about 15 years and that was last year. He's also the guy in the zombie commercial that was sitting on the chair, the little, um, the little uh, mannequin, that, that's him. Um, but uh, this, on this special occasion, he was inducted into the New Jersey um, Wrestling Hall of Fame. Um, and so he's been with our agency for 12, 15 years, and he's being inducted. And so we put it up. You know, again, we're personalizing who we are to our community. The guys on the right, um, they're our weightlifting team. They were at the Police Olympics. They won gold medals um, there. The guy on the far right, um, that's Jim Hammond. He's one of our sergeants. I'm pretty sure he does steroids. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, we have some big guys in our agency. A lot of times I'll joke with them and say, hey, um, you better stop doing steroids. You're going to get caught. All the rest of them go, Sheriff, I ain't doing steroids. When I tell him, he's like, mm, I know. <laughs> uh, so, it concerns me a little bit, but he's strong. If you're in a fight, you want Jimbo on the scene, I can tell you that. Um, next slide. Our lunch and learns that we talked about, you can see we do them on active shooters, identity theft, um, the opioid epidemic. Um, uh, I'm trying to read. Um, what's the next one down there, Jack? Get reading. Um, oh, frauds and scams. Yeah, frauds and scams. So. Um, uh, you know, if you're, you had a group or your business, you want to do it, we come in, we do it for free. <clears throat> Mail call, I'll just kind of, um, the idea came from, uh, what's the, um, he just passed away not long ago, the drill instructor, um, early, um, mm -hmm. I think was his name, uh, he did mail call. So we kind of do it where people write in, they ask us questions about our agency, and so we do it in this format. Go ahead, Jim. Hello everyone, I'm Sheriff Wayne Ivory, the Department County Sheriff's Office. By the way, if you'd like to... 
on the go. This is a new um, uh, thing we do every couple weeks. Um, just flip to it, Jay. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lindsay Deaton, and welcome to On the Go with BCSO. what we did the last two weeks in the agency. This is um, one that we've gained quite a bit of success with. I actually climb in the front seat of the car with one of our deputies and I go out and I ride a shift with them and we film. It's kind of like our version of live PD or cops. Um, the, the difference is in this one, uh, the goal is for them to get an arrest um, because if they take me out for eight hours and they don't get an arrest, I ask them why do I have you. Um, uh, we're, we're, so they don't want to be asked that, so they're they're hustling. We had one guy got two arrests. I found out two days later um, that he um, he set them both up because uh, he got with our drug unit and found out that these two people had warrants for him, and so we went to their house and arrested them. But hey, he got his arrest. He was he was having his um, Just got to give you a little quick. Uh, Hello everybody, I'm Sheriff Wayne Ivey of the Brevard County Sheriff's Office. It's time for another exciting episode of Riding Shotgun. Tonight I have the honor of riding with Deputy Candace Watson out of our East Precinct. Candace is always on fire, making sure she's putting bad people in jail. So we're going to have some fun tonight. Let's go ride shotgun with Deputy Candace Watson. Alright, let's roll. So Candace, first of all, thanks for letting me ride with you tonight. I, um, I hear nothing but great, great things about uh, the work you do out here. And, how aggressive you are. So, what up? Um, our new podcast that we come out with, oh, by the way, Riding Shotgun, um, when we run those, they, they, they get shared and, and reach quite a few people. Um, we have another version that's um, called Behind the Bars at the Brevard County Jail. And it's the same thing, but we're with our corrections deputies who have one of the most dangerous jobs in, in our profession. Um, out of the two, which one do you think gets more um, shares and more attention? Which one do you think? You would think the, the deputy's out, right? The jail. The jail is very intriguing to people. Every, everybody wants to know what happens um, uh, in the jail and how it operates and stuff. The new podcast we started doing. Well, I'm sure we're well, well, listening well, now. Sure sure it's time for another else. great episode so, of On the Go with BCSO. Um, as always, I'm joined by our co-host, uh, Sergeant Jay Martinez. And uh, Jay, um, it's always great to do these, sit down and oh, yeah. um, just let our citizens learn about all the different aspects of our agency and stuff. And um, I know you're out at our Canaveral precinct, but yeah. today you're here at headquarters and okay. we're going to have a little fun with one of our um, canine deputies. Well, it's good so, to be here. He we got, we got uh, Sean Crook, one of our uh, corporals, our canine deputy. And uh, Sean, always great to have everybody. <laughs> I never realized that before. Until this <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, again, we, we put those on our Facebook page, but we also put them out on our podcast. And uh, a, a, another reachable tool for us now are people that are listening as they're driving to and from work, as they're um, uh, going driving to Orlando, wherever it is they work at. So we're able to reach a, another dynamic of our audience. Live video, I think this is the one off the pier. Hello everyone, I'm Sheriff Wayne Ivey, and you're on scene uh, 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 As you can see behind me, Hurricane Matthew is getting closer and strengthening. So I wanted to provide uh, basically our community an update on the store, let our citizens know everything that, that they can do to protect themselves. Currently the initial right. impacts of the... That, that one video reached 250,000 people. So it shows you how thirsty people are for information when something like that's happening. What did you notice about that video? What, what, what did you pick up on? I noticed you didn't have a tattoo yet that you have now. Uh, yeah, I had one. I didn't have the other one. So, um, what? Anything you notice? My hair. Yeah, it was darker. All right. No, it was strong. All right. It. it my my uniform could have blown off, and my hair would not have moved. All right? I, I don't know. It was like, man, that's not going anywhere. So, yeah. So it was darker too. It was a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's what happens when you're married to a redhead. So, so um, required resources and tools. Um, cost associated with outsourced PSA production, we couldn't afford to do the volume of stuff. We put up something just about every night on our page. Our media production team of three people is constantly working. Um, anybody, by the way, um, this is going to be shift to a recruiting um, uh, video. If you know anybody that has videography and editing skills, we are hiring right now. One of our teams retiring, and so we're, we're hiring right now. So put your app in, go to our website, brevardsheriff.com, if you or anybody else is interested. 
Frequency, um, we talked about, we do something just about every night. In-house um, studio, the associated costs for me are really the salaries of three people. I use drug money to buy all the cameras, all the lights, everything else. Thank you to our drug dealers for supporting our efforts. Uh, and then uh, frequency abilities, we're, we're able to do as much as we want. Literally, um, if something happens right now, I can go to our studio and I can produce something in a matter of hours um, in there and put it, I may not have all the great editing that Mark does on, on a lot of our stuff, but um, it'll, it'll have the message and the content of the message um, from it. So, so um, what has worked? Um, practically everything we have tried has worked to some degree. There have been some things that we tried a couple things of and it just didn't take off like we wanted, um, but uh, for the most part, we've toyed with stuff and, and getting out there. One of the things that works for us, without question, is mixing humor into what we do. Um, are there people that don't like what we do? There are people that don't like Wheel of Fugitive. There are people that don't like those things. Um, I figured out real quick after I became sheriff, you cannot make 100% of anything happy. You can't do it. And so I do off of our Facebook page and our, our social media, what I believe in my heart is the right thing to do to engage our citizens. I do what I believe is the best thing based upon my 40 plus years of law enforcement. I do what my team gives me ideas to do. Um, uh, I, I, I value what they think so much. Um, when we put a video out, we'll run it past each other and show it. What do you think? People look. Um, uh, and then we value, of course, what our citizens think and those that are, 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 are people that are working with us. So um, what's worked is engagement. That's what's worked more than anything else is engaging our community. Um, what has not worked? Not watching over your material, producing something and not having five sets of eyes look at it. Perfect example in the video um, with Junie and I in the truck. Um, first thing that went up wasn't, hey, everybody keep your dog safe. The first thing that went up was, I spy somebody not wearing their seatbelt. Yeah. All right? <laughs> and I wasn't. And the, the reason I wasn't is we had filmed like 15 takes of that. And I'd gotten in and out of the truck every time, and one of those takes, I forgot to put my seatbelt on, and somebody picked up on it. Um, we did a, a, um, a video one time where um, I was wearing, uh, this sounds really odd to say, I was wearing um, high heel shoes for Walk a Mile in Her Shoes, and we did a bunch of funny little excerpts. One of them, I was on a motorcycle wearing high heel shoes. Do not try that. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I almost got killed doing that. But um, uh, the, Cheryl, our media production manager, said, do you want to wear your helmet? Um, with it and I said no I don't think anybody will be able to hear what I'm saying and everything um, and I, I said to her I said it's not the law that you have to wear your helmet I said so I'll do it so what do you think the first thing people talked about yeah. Yeah. sure you're sending the wrong message helmets are safe seat belts are there so and they were right they were a thousand percent right so um, we try to have five or six different sets of eyes I send it to Doug Waller to look at because if Doug says, man, I love this, we scrap it. We don't use it. Uh, because nothing he likes is very popular. Um, in all honesty, I, I told Doug I was going to do fishing for fugitives, and he said, oh, man, I like that. I think I'm like, uh-oh, this may not be a good idea. So, but, um, so, you know, what has not worked is being being too quick in putting our stuff out there. we got to take our time and, and put it out. But those are the things I would say. So.